So in theory, we have a ship that is lurping around this box, but we're not drawing this ship, so we need to draw the ship so we can actually see it do the lurping. That's the purpose of this video. But before we move on, I noticed a few things I want to clean up. There's a lot of things we need to clean up, but a few things we need to clean up. I noticed that these are private functions, but I did not intend them to be slots. Remember, slots is a QT thing, which makes this sort of an event handler. Signals and slots, that sort of thing, we've covered that. I'm going to move these down to the actual private section so that they're not with the private slots. This also has to do with mocking our files, because when we mock the file, it'll generate mock handlers for that sort of thing. So I don't want to do that. That's cleanup number one. I also noticed over here... I believe we forgot to initialize lerp alpha to zero, which we did. So we could assign it to zero here, but then if our game wants to reload, if we want to come back and shut down our game and then and reinitialize it and then shut down and reinitialize it, and right, reinitialize it, then it's good to do, put the initialization there. Uh, one other side note, though, in C++, since this is a global variable, this will actually take on the default value of zero, whereas if you define a variable on the stack, it doesn't, and yada yada yada. So that's why I kind of got lucky here. This will default to zero, but I want to be explicit with it and find our initialize function. Let's see, collapse all these. Here's initialize. We did destination lerp point is one, target next lerp point. So here I'll set lerp alpha to zero. And then also another problem is one could be out of range for the number of lerp points we have. If we don't have at least two lerp points, we have a problem. So we should signify that with this Boolean here somehow. I think what we'll do is right here say if num lerp points is greater than one, or greater than, yeah, greater than one, that would be two in anything higher than, sure enough, let's uh, initialize our lerp code, uh, else ret gets false, remember we're using this ret boolean and just going down, initializing everything, if one of them fails, then we're going to mean to return false, and I can hear my fellow coworkers screaming at me to put uh, curlies in here, generally I won't put curlies in for one line statements, but since I have curlies up here for a multi line statement, then sure, why not? I don't, it's, it's fine with me. One other thing to point out since we're using the modulus operation, where is that code? Where is that? Target next lerp point right here. We're using the modulus operation to wrap around. There is a possibility if the game runs long enough and destination lerp point hits the maximum value for an unsigned int that the lerping ship will jump. I'm going to guess that the player will not play the game that long. However, if I want to be perfectly have have some perfect behavior here, then I would actually check for that condition. But I'm not, but I do want to point it out that I'm at least aware of that. Let's build this, just make sure everything still builds and runs. I think we're good. So we're roughly three and a half, four minutes into this video, and we're not even doing the, the lerper. All we need to do is draw the lerper. So we need to do that in the draw function. Now we already have code to draw our current ship. The ship here, I can control it with my arrow keys, and that's fine. What I want to do is reuse this ship. I mean, we have already sent it down to OpenGL. I don't want to come up with some new vertices and send them down to OpenGL. We're not polishing our game yet. If we were polishing the game, then I would come up with all these cool looking shapes and colors and things like that. We're still definitely in the development process of that. We're also done with this profile stuff, so I think we'll take that out and clean that up a little bit. Shift to tab and sign operator right there. Here we transform the verts. Here we do our OpenGL. So if I want to draw the ship twice, I'm going to control home, go to the top of the file. Remember we sent these verts down, or every frame we send these verts down to the graphics card. And we already have the code that transforms all of those vertices. We did that right here in previous videos. What I want to do is simply take advantage of this code already just to prove that our ship is lurping in the background. Let me 
this build, make sure we're still good. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this is, again, our code starting to smell bad, and I can feel a major refactor. That's probably what we're going to have to do in the next few videos is refactor and clean this code up. Uh, but right now we transform the verts, we go, we apply the matrix against every single ship vert, and then we do GL. And so what we could do is change our operator for our lerper. Okay, right now the operator says, well, wherever the ship is, times the scale of the ship, and also we have a rotation, all these three combined uh, make up the the matrix that draws our ship here on the screen. We've seen that in several videos. I want to reuse this essentially to draw our lerper. So looks right here we we actually draw the ship. So I'm thinking all we really need to do is oh I hate copy and paste. Oops. Control C. I'm gonna copy that. Paste it here. Actually I should have brought the op down with us and put that there. The translator, we still want the scale. Remember, we're doing the scale to make up for the width and the height of our screen. The lerper, I'm not going to worry about rotating the lerper, but the translation, the translation needs to be the location of the lerping ship instead of our spaceship that we fly around. So if I can find translator here, I'm gonna grab this code and reset up our, our translator to be not the ship position but the lerp what did we call that I I can't remember let's go up here I should have prefixed it with lerp uh, current lerper position I should call this lerper position in fact all the lerp stuff I would have been wise to prefix with lerp so then when I'm coding I could just type lerp and IntelliSense would help me out there but Anyway, uh, well, maybe that's a refactor we can do. Current lerper position, current lerper position. So we'll change our translation matrix. We'll scale, we'll pack both of those into the operator matrix, which we declared up here, so we do not need to redeclare down here. And then warp all of our transformed verts again, and then just say, hey, uh, draw. So control F5, let's see, hopefully this works. Hey, I see a lerper, but our ship's gone. Our ship that we fly around is gone, and I suspect that's because DoGL clears the, oops, DoGL, DoGL clears the screen. Let me open this up, and yep, we clear. So I'm actually going to take this out I think this comment still suffices for right here. Uh, yep. But now that we have that out, let's do. Let's go back to our draw code. We'll clear the screen at the very beginning. We'll draw our transform ship, and then we'll set up our matrices again, transform all the vertices again, and then draw again. This code is hideous. It needs a a major cleanup and. I think that's what we'll, we should work on that next. Let's see. Oh, there we go. There's the lerper, though. Notice the lerper's moving really fast on the long coordinate axis. You see as I drag the screen wider. We've seen that before, and we understand why we move faster on one axis than on another. If we get a roughly square, square uh, window here, then that solves that problem. Anyway, cool. We got the lerper. Then I can fly my ship around. Just fine. Actually, I want to just mess around here a little bit. Times, rotator. I'm going to throw the rotation back in here. Bring it back up, and then as I turn my ship, the lerper will turn with it. So that's kind of fun. And we could set up code to have the lerper point in the direction where it's headed. And Actually, we're going to do something similar to that by setting up a rotation matrix based off some positions of the mouse in the center of the screen. But We'll do that in a later video. I think for now we need to get into cleaning pretty much this entire file. Needs an overhaul and a refactor. And we're actually starting to build a game, but we only have one file in our game, and yet our game does several things. So we need to start building some systems, refactoring, that sort of thing.